working, we're recording. So my name is Lex Huffman. If you don't know me already, I think you opened up to some of Carly's team too. Um, I'm a double diamond with It Works and I'm so excited to be interviewing Carly tonight. It's such an honor. She is a triple diamond and we're gonna get just poured into by her and I have a couple questions that I wanna ask. But if you just wanna unmute yourself first and just like introduce yourself, tell a little bit or like because of It Works moments or whatever. There we go. Okay. Yes. So my name is Carly Guerrero. I'm a triple diamond. I've been, it's actually, um, so the 19th will be my three year anniversary with this business. So that's so crazy. I was like, Oh my gosh, it's November 1st. And I joined in November. So like when's my anniversary? So it's coming up super soon. Um, but I joined this business, you guys, because when, and I always say that this business found me, um, because you know it came into my life. We were literally struggling, struggling so bad. Um, I was a full-time hairstylist. And so I, I loved what I did. I've always loved the beauty industry. I love doing hair. I love doing makeup. Like that was just my jam. Um, but I went right into booth renting. So if you know what that means, that means I was having to pay for my chair and supply everything. Okay. And so it was $500 a month just for the chair on top of buying color on top of buying like products and combs and brushes and like blow dryers and straighteners when they go out. And so it was seriously like just a struggle bus. I was married at the time. And I remember sitting down one night and just thinking like, how much money am I like bringing in, like helping, you know, in our family. And it was like $200 a month, you guys. A month two hundred dollars like me okay plus my husband which I mean he was doing his thing um, so but we were still struggling somehow and you know there was literally disconnection notices on our like in our mailbox like what felt like every single week um, our heat had been shut off our water had gotten shut off we had three cars repossessed and our daughter was one and if you have kids you know how expensive like formula is diapers just like keeping up with your kids like everything and I was like I feel like a failure because I have this tiny human who literally depends on me and I can't do the things that she needs me to do because I don't have the freaking money so like I need to figure out something else to do so I remember praying okay I just sat down and I was like I opened my hands I was like I don't care like whatever is out there, like literally I want you to like drop it on me. Like I just want it to like come crashing down and just like hit me. And I was a hairstylist. And so I worked or I, I promoted my business on Instagram. You know, I had a page um, with all of the hair that I had done. And I remember I was following people and I had came across Courtney Boar's Instagram on the explore page. She had platinum blonde, long hair. And I was like, why is her hair perfect? Like, who is this girl? and I just start creeping her Instagram it like sucked me in okay and so I always tell everybody like make sure that your Instagram is like gonna get people's attention because I wouldn't have joined this business if her Instagram hadn't sucked me in you know and I was like scrolling like two years down in her Instagram and I saw she was standing next to a brand new car and she was talking about how she paid it off and she made like crazy car payments and literally I was like this is so fake like, that's what I thought. I was like nobody can pay off a brand new car in four months like who does that right and then like, I just started thinking, wait, what if this is real? And like, if that's real, then I need to be doing whatever that girl's doing because clearly like she's figured something out. And so I messaged her. Okay. Just sent her a quick message. What do you do? You know, asked her all these questions. She answered them. And at the time you guys, I had no money. I had no money to get started. I think I had like maybe $2 in my bank account. And I was like, wow, like I really freaking want to do this, but I don't have $99 and I don't know, you know, like how I could get that. And then I was like, okay, I have a super busy day in the salon on Friday. Okay. And we were living paycheck to paycheck. Cause like I said, I mean, it was the struggle bus. We were on WIC and food stamps, just all kinds of things. And so I remember, you know, I was like, I'm going to the hair salon. I have a busy day. I'm going to make like 400 or $500, but that money was already spoken for, you know, like X amount here. some going here. some going to groceries. And I was sitting at my table and I had a hundred dollars left and it was supposed to go towards our water bill. Cause like I said, her, our water would like get shut off and stuff. And I was like, okay, like, pay your water bill and then like figure out a way, I guess, to join this business. And so I did not pay my water bill on time. I was like, I'm going to risk it getting shut off one more time. And I'm going to like join this business because we got a hundred dollars worth of product in our kit. And I was like, I can get that product, sell it and then go pay my water bill. So I thought I was like killing two birds with one stone. Um, and I remember like, as soon as I clicked submit, I was like sweating. I was like, okay, this is either going to be the biggest blessing or like, you just made the biggest mistake. Like you just didn't pay your water bill. You lost hundred dollars. Like what have you done? I went Ruby in two months. Um, and that allowed me to come home full time because I mean, a Ruby $500 a month, I was making more than 200. So I could come home and stay with my daughter full time because that's honestly what I wanted to do. 
in four months, I went diamond. And then a year after that, I went um, double diamond. And from going double, that's whenever life really started hitting me hard, you guys. Um, along the way, you know, my marriage was always rocky. It was very toxic um, and <clears throat> manipulative. Um, and I went double and I told myself, if you go double, you're going to move out of this duplex and you're going to go and get a house for your family. Okay. And we moved into the house in April and then July, who has ever heard that every six months you're going to go through life, right? Put a one in the, in the chat. Every six months, some kind of life happens, whether it's, you know, a family member gets super Super sick or your car you've got to get all new tires your car breaks down and you've got to get a new car like something's gonna happen right okay and most of the time you're not prepared for it okay and I wasn't necessarily prepared for what I went through but I know that God like places business in my life because he knew what my dream was gonna be um, and July of 2018 I was actually able to leave an abusive marriage because of this business because I had shown up every single day and poured my heart and soul into you know my team to get it to where it needed to be and I was able to leave um, in July on July 10th I left and I had no car okay and I was like seven months pregnant and I was like crap like you're going to the doctor like you know once a week like you've got to have a car and so I went to the car dealership on July 12th two days after I left my marriage and I was like I don't know, you know, like what my credit's like, you know, I don't know if I'm even going to be able to get anything. Like, I don't care if I'm driving a dang box on wheels. I just need a car. Okay. And the very first dream board that I ever made, I put a Toyota 4Runner on that dream board. Okay. I go into that dealership and he said, we have a 2010 Toyota 4Runner that, you know, we'll see if we can get you in. And I'm like, okay, he let me test drive it. He comes back. He had ran everything. He said, if you can put $2,500 down, this car is yours. We got paid the next day, you guys. And it was like one of my highest double checks that I had ever gotten. Went and took that $2,500, put it down on that car. That car is now sitting in my driveway. I was able to get an apartment on my own. Um, what else? Oh, and then I had my son. So I got my apartment in August. In September, I had my son. So now I'm a single mom of two. And then in October, I promoted a triple diamond. And so literally in like the craziest craziest time of my life, you know, all of this change and everything, I was able to reach such a huge goal because I never put my business on the back burner. And I knew that, you know, it's just like a nine to five. Okay. They don't care what your marriage is like. They don't care the stress that you're going through. You're committed to that job and to that duty and to doing whatever it's like necessary for that job title. And if you can't do it, then you're not going to work there anymore. Right? Like, and that's kind of hard to swallow, but it's the same thing with this business. Like, why not keep showing up to it? And I always tell everybody, because they're like, how did you do that? I'm like, well, this business is what I controlled. It was like the one thing that I was in control of. And so if everything else was so chaotic and so sucky, like, why not pour into my business and make it the best thing that's going on at the time? And that's exactly what I did. But that's my story. It's just been a crazy roller coaster, and here I am. Yay. Oh, my gosh. I love that. And your story is so relatable for, I think, so many people on my team, especially like, I just know that they needed to hear that. So I'm so glad that you shared your story and thank you for being vulnerable. One thing that I wanted to point out that is just so key, you guys, and I tell you all the time, but like, she did not use her why as her excuse. And I love that. Like you used that to fuel your fire. And that's something that I tell my team all the time, but maybe coming from someone else too, just like hearing it again of just life is always going to be crazy, but you've made it a priority and you just like went for it. I love that. Yeah. So my first question for you, or I guess from my team, is how do you get your newbies as excited as you are about this business or to like catch that vision right off the bat? So I think that a lot of it, honestly, you guys, it's just like you being excited. And I know that that almost sounds like stupid, simple, but like it actually is. Okay. Um, because, you know, and nobody's business is going to be perfect. You know what I mean? I mean, there's been times where like my team hasn't had the momentum or there's been times where, you know, we've signed new distributors and they don't do anything. And that's honestly because like, it all starts with me, you know, and I always tell my team that like, it starts with me, it trickles down into my leaders. And then from there it trickles down into our whole team. And so, you know, I honestly just kind of like have like a reality check with myself almost like every single day when I'm going like into like my team page or like my team chat. And I'm just like, look, like if I'm sitting here and I'm not showing up, and I'm not excited, why are they going to be? You know what I mean? And so honestly, just remember that the momentum starts with you, okay? So if you feel like maybe it's slow or it's not where you want it to be or, you know, something's just not clicking in your business, sit down and figure out what that is, 
Okay. Like genuinely just sit down and like, even some, I talk out loud to myself sometimes. Like I'll be sitting in my office and I'm like, okay, so what do we need to work on? Right. Literally that's what I do. And it seems silly, but it works. Okay. And so the momentum starts with you and you create the culture for your team. So if you want your team to be something that's super fun and exciting, then make sure that you're being fun and excited and celebrate every little thing. Like literally we celebrate everything, every enrollment. We're like, boom, LC, boom, DT you know, people will be like, Oh, I have a potential distributor. I have a potential customer. And we'll share like each other's posts, like in our team chat and we'll all go and like and comment and hype them up because we are one team, one mission. And it's like, why not <laughs> Tony? I just saw your husband. That was funny. Um, like why not, you know, just have fun with it. And so always remember like the momentum starts with you and you're going to create that culture. And so if you're sitting there and it's kind of like, you know, if, if you're wanting to attract a rock star on your team, but you're just like not being a rock star, you're not going to attract a rock star, right? So like be what you want to attract, but be what you want your team to be, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's perfect. And I love that answer too, because like, it's so easy to get caught up in like the logistics or the questions of like, oh, I just feel like they're not wanting this as bad as me. And I love that you just bring it back to you. And like everything is centered from you, not but just with momentum and enrollments, but even just the overall attitude that your team has and like what's being dropped in chats and how, how excited everyone is. So I love that. And do you, would you typically say, and I'm just adding this question on myself, just purely out of curiosity, two questions, I guess. One, do you have like a boom chat that's specifically for enrollments or you just, it's like a congratulatory thing or do you call specific people out when they enroll or no we have like okay we have like our team page um and then in our team page we have like a welcome thread because i like it to be like super organized like i do not like when i go into a team page and it's like shout outs and welcomes and questions and everything on the thread because i'm like i can't find anything like i'm looking for this specific thing and i can't find it because there's so many shout outs and that i'm very like organized OCD. So stuff like that just stresses me out. And so in my team page, we have a shout out thread for shout outs. Like, Hey, this girl's really showing up, you know, blah, blah, blah. And obviously like, you know, people will see that notification if they've commented on the posts and stuff, you know what I mean? So like it's, it gets seen. And then we have another one for like new distributors. So it's like, welcome to the team. We'll share their like cute graphic and then like a quick, like, well, you know, help me welcome this girl. Like she's so excited, you know, yada, yada, yada um, in our team page. And then we have a chat, which is our fire chat. So like our team page is everybody, like literally our entire downline. And then the fire chat, those are the people who we see showing up. And so it's kind of like, just because you're in it doesn't mean you're staying in it. Like if you're enrolling and you're showing up like good, but if you stop working and you stop enrolling and you stop showing up, we remove you. That doesn't mean that you can never come back. That just means like do the work be on fire and you get put back in the fire chat. But within the fire chat, that's where we'll boom. We'll ask questions. Um, and that's literally like just everybody in like my downline who's actively working, doing things and like being excited. I love the idea of like removing them, not out of malice or anything. And again, just like you said, not that they can't come back, but as an incentive to stay like, yeah. Well, you... It's like, it's a business. We didn't join this to just have a bunch of friends. That's, something that comes along with it. Like, and I, I've told my team this, I joined for, for money. I joined for selfish reasons. I joined like to be able to provide for my family. And at the end of the day, if there's anything standing in the way of like me reaching my goals and me making that money, I'm going to address it because it is a business first and foremost. And it's almost like you have to always remember that. Like you didn't join this. And sometimes I'll, like, it's not a sorority. Like we didn't, like, you're not always going to have everybody like happy at with you. Like you're going to ruffle some feathers sometimes. And you have to remember that because it is a business and it's your paycheck and it's your bills that you're paying with this. And so when it comes down to it, if you have to do something that's like best for your business, but, and there's been sometimes like, even like, I'll have to go to some of my leaders. I'm like, hi, I love you. And this is like me removing my friendship. And this is like me as your leader, like, and we'll address it and we just move on because like, that's kind of like the culture that we've created is like, yes, we're friends, but we've also joined for business. And so we kind of always tell each other, like, sometimes they'll come to me and they're like, Hey, like we're coming to you like business. Like we need to fix this, you know? And then like, I go to them. And so it's just like, you know, kind of like trusting and understanding, like you joined it for a business and to make money. So at the end of the day, like that needs to be the foundation of like everything, like it's a business. And so if you have people not showing up and they're in a fire chat, like chats get maxed out. You know what I mean? So why keep people 
I think it's like 250, 250 people can be in one Facebook chat, Facebook messenger. And so if you've got like 30 people who are in there, but they're not doing anything and you see them post here and there, like, good job for posting. I'm so proud of you. But what about all the other things that you need to be doing? And like, there's something that's not clicking because you're not producing something. So those are the people who it's like, love you, but you're out until you can get it together. And we'll, we'll say things like, you know, we're cleaning the chat out, like, like this message or love this message. If you want to stay in and remember, if you want to stay in, you need to start producing and then we'll keep an eye on it. And if they're not producing, you're out, not, not, not producing, but like, if you're not like do like, if you're not actually, like we don't see your post, you're not sending messages, you know, things like that. Then I love that. And are you, and this is again, totally a side question that I didn't put on our little thing, but, um, do you do haps or do you purely message or are you attraction marketing or what's your MO? All of it. Literally all of it. Like, I love that answer. Why do just one? Like literally, like if I'm only messaging, what about all the people who could host posts for me? And if I'm only host posting, what about all the dang seeds that I could be planting by messaging that eventually will turn into a harvest? And I actually did a live video in my team page about this today because I was on the phone with a girl on my team and I started talking about corn. I don't remember exactly what brought it up, but I was like, literally like, and I'm not a farmer, but I was like pretending I was like, if I'm a farmer, okay. And I've got a farm and I want um, to have this huge field of corn. If I plant one corn seed or one grain of corn, does that one grain of corn fill the entire field? And like when it's time to harvest, am I going to be able to harvest like an actual like harvest from that one thing that I did? No. And so I, I related, I was like, look at it as if your chart is your field. You, if you're going to be, I don't have any candy in here. You can go get some candy from your Halloween box. Go ask Gigi. Um, if you have that one, she will not go to sleep tonight. But, you know, if your chart is your field, just signing on one distributor does not chart you for that promotion. You have to keep going, you know, sending one message. It's not going to immediately turn into a loyal customer. And so that's what I was getting at is you plant that one grain of corn. And if you go away for an hour and come back, you don't have a corn stalk, right? It takes time. And so if you've planted hundreds and you give that time, eventually you're going to have this huge harvest. And so it's like, why not message? Why not do host to post? Why not do attraction marketing? Because there's going to be people who relate to different things. You're going to have some people who, yeah, they enroll from a host post. You're going to have some people who they enroll from a dang message, but you're going to have some people who are just watching you. And then you post something that finally just gets through to them. And they're like, okay, wow. Even if it's like, I really like those new boots that you bought and you work a business from your phone. Like, I think I want to do this so I can go buy some new boots. Like, that's why you have to show your life. Like, that's why you have to show like, you know, I mean, I need to go wash my hair. I need, I've been in my pajamas all day and I posted a picture of me earlier like this, but there's sometimes you'll see me with my hair washed and in cute clothes, you know, but like show both sides of you because if you're perfect all the time, like always have your hair done. Think about like the, like for me, okay, I'm a single mom. How many single moms are always perfect? You've always got your hair done. You've always got your makeup on, like not a lot, right? Not a lot. And so what if that was me, the perfect single mom on social media? Well, what about the single moms who are hot messes? They're not going to feel like they want to come to me or follow me because they're like, I don't relate to this girl. I don't have my hair done every day. I don't have my makeup on every day. But if they're like, okay, she looks cute for church today. And then they see me on a Monday and they're like, dang, you look like you rolled out of bed. And I'm like, yeah, I did, but I don't care because this is me and you're going to get what you get. But people relate to that. Okay. So like, just always remember like be you and do all the things that you can in this business to get all the enrollments. Like why not do all of it? Oh, that's such a perfect answer. And it kind of flows into my next question too, of just like, and I want like a nitty gritty answer of just like, what is a six list for you that's got you to where you are or that you're doing right now? Because I know things are so ever changing, but like specifically, what are you doing every day? Yeah. Okay. So first off, I don't know what a schedule is. I have no schedule and everybody's always like, what does your day look like? And I'm like, which day? Because every single day is different. Like they're all different, like literally. Um, but what I do is I won't go to bed until all of the things that I have to do for my business are done. Okay. And so 
start with that and make sure that that is like, like that's what's happening. You're not going to bed until everything that you have to do for your business, sit down here until everything that Berkeley, if you're, you got to go either in there and sit or you have to sit down in here. You're not going to be ruffling these wrappers in my ear. Okay. Um, she's got a whole bowl of candy now. So yay. Um, but all days look different. Okay. Um, and as far as like, you know, not going to bed until I get all my things done, the things that I do every single day are I post every single day. Okay. I will post to my Instagram and to my Facebook and to my story. Sit right here. Girlfriend. Okay. If you cry, they're all going to see you cry. And I'm going to go get Abby from upstairs. Her elf on a shelf came today. And if she does, she's not good. Santa Claus will not be happy. Um, I'll, even though Abby's upstairs, I can remind her how you act downstairs. So remember that. So my sixth list is post every single day, no matter what. Okay. If you are cute, if you look a hot mess, I don't care. Okay. You're being you. All right. So it's not early for elf on the shelf. Allison, it is November 1st. Christmas is here. Um, I message every single day. Okay. No matter what. There are days that I don't feel like messaging, okay? The other day, um, I was making grilled cheese and tomato soup for dinner, and I was literally, like, messaging and, like, flipping my grilled cheese. Like, I'd flip it and, like, send 10 messages and then flip it again and send 10 more and then flip it again, and I was messaging while I was cooking dinner, okay? Um, I follow up every single day, not with everybody, but it's just, like, you get a feel for how the conversation's going, right? And so if, you were mess if you're messaging every day, which you should be, and you're talking to people yesterday who are super excited, well, then you need to be following up with them today. And so it just kind of like trickles. So I'm always following up every single day and I follow, I grow my network every single day. Okay. On Facebook, I am maxed out and I hate unfriending people on Facebook. And so I just wait for people to like unfriend me and then I'll go add some more people until I get back up to 5,000. Then I kind of just like do the same thing over and over again. I do work mostly Instagram, but I still work both. And so I really focus on like growing my Instagram a little more than my Facebook. Um, I add value to my team in some way, whether that be like going live about something, um, giving them some kind of like script or something that's working for me or like an idea, but some kind of value to my team, whether it's like in the team page or fire chat or wherever it is. Um, and I look at charts every single day, not my chart, but like my team's charts or the girls who I see showing up, the girls who are close to promoting and kind of look to see you know, okay, where is the volume at today? Like, what's their projected volume going to be at the end of the month? Is it still on track with what I have? Are they charted for their promotion and things like that? So posting, messaging, following up, follow, adding value and charting are the things that I do every day. I love the adding value to your team piece. I love, I think everybody needed to hear that. <laughs> I know I needed to hear that. I definitely pour into my team, but there are times where, and it's just such a reminder, even hearing you say again, like not looking at my chart, like looking at their chart and not just the people who I need to promote, but the people who are showing up. And I think that that's like a key. That's honestly, um, and I've been talking about this a lot because like this whole year, you know, it's been like almost like a, like a humbling, just like growth, like self growth year, like getting, because, and you guys will see this, like as you're promoting, you know, no matter what rank you are, but the person that I was when I went Ruby is not who I am today. The person who I was when I went diamond is not who I am today. Double, triple. Like when I go press, I'm dang sure not the Carly that I was last year on October 31st. You know, like I've grown so much. And that's the thing that you have to remember is each promotion. And it's almost, and don't let this scare you. Okay. Because it's life. But each promotion that you hit, you're on the mountaintop. Okay. To get to that next promotion, that next mountaintop, there's some valley that you're going to have to go through at some time, okay? And mine was honestly losing rank, okay? I lost rank, and I was like, dang, ouch, that hurts, you know, what do I do now? But that was, like, God's way of just showing me, like, you have, like, really big thing. Because, like, can you, like, I can't imagine a $16,000 paycheck. Like, you know, when I think about that, I'm like, that's insane, and when I think about like going ambassador, I'm like, okay, a $30,000 paycheck. Like, you know, you can go get a blanket and bring it in here. Go get a blanket. And so, you know, I think that like God just wanted to like humble me and like kind of like teach me 
how to be better with money so that he can bless me with more. Um, but also just like I had, I had to grow as a leader from me going triple to me going presidential because a presidential team is a bit, I mean, obviously every rank is a bigger team, but like presidential is huge. You're one rank away from the top of the company. Like, you know, you've got to be, you know, your heart and mind, like really need to be like there, um, not for you, but for your team. And I heard, I don't remember who said this, but if you've ever wondered why there's no double, triple present ambassador chart in E-suite, it's because after diamond, it's not about you. Okay. It's not about you going double and you going triple and you going pres and you going ambassador. It's about those girls under you going Ruby diamond emerald. And if you just keep duplicating that, guess what? That gets you to double, triple pres and ambassador. And so I have a presidential chart. Um, just so when I get closer to being charted again, um, I can like fill in the boxes and then as people are at 400, I'm just going to highlight them, but I'm looking at my team's charts. I'm looking at, my girl's going triple, my girl's going double, my girl's going diamond, my new distributors who are excited to go ruby and emerald and diamond. And those are the charts that I work off because if I'm able to help them reach their goals, that brings in more group volume than I can need to go presidential because presidential is a hundred thousand group volume, right? Like if I was just trying to bring in a hundred thousand group volume off of my, my presidential chart, like it'd probably be kind of tough, right? Like, I don't know. I feel like it would be tough or like maybe not like, be as like sustainable if it was just off my chart. But if I'm working with girls across the board under my team who want this, who are working, like that's what's sustainable because you're working with the people who want it and who are showing up, you know? So I think that it is about realizing that it's not always about you and your promotion because did anybody join this business to be a 400 box? No, you joined to go, you know, and I don't know like who you joined or what rank they were when you joined, but whenever I joined, Courtney Boy was an ambassador diamond. So I was like, heck, I want to make $30,000 a month. And I, I put my faith in her that she was going to lead me and give me what I needed to be where she is. And that's what she's done, you know? And so always remember, like, people didn't join this business so that they could be a 400 bucks for you to go diamond. Like, yes, that's probably where you need them. But at the end of the day, why not give them that attention to go ruby? Why not give that attention to help them go emerald and diamond? And imagine, like, I mean, you know, if you had just so many diamonds on your team because you poured in and led your girls, imagine how successful your business would be and how freaking big your paychecks could be because you're literally just helping and loving on everybody. So, I kind of went on. No, it totally answered my question. I love it. I love it. I think it's so key too. I can't remember who said it, but there was a Zoom that I was on like a couple weeks ago and she said something about, it's not about the volume or the distributors that you need to hit a certain rank. It's who you need to become and then how you help them become those people too. I love that. And every time I hear that or like think about that, like that's just like a mantra that I just like try and repeat to myself all the time. And it just kind of like resonated with me with what's, well, I can't talk with what you just said too. Um, okay. So let's move on to the next thing. How do you keep track of your potentials for easy follow-up? And I know that you said you're like totally OCD and I'm like the least organized person you'll possibly meet. So give me some love, sis. Let me get my binder and help y'all. Okay. First off, go and buy a binder from your local Walmart or Target or wherever. Go and get you a binder. Okay. And then print you, I used word swag and I made like my goals and like where like says road to ambassador. Okay. And all my goals, like, which I'm behind on my first one, it said presidential by September. So I'm behind on that mass enroller, top 130 income earner, um, double up on car payments, pay off debt ambassador in December. That's happening. No presidential is happening. Not ambassador ambassador in July. Um, 20 new diamonds you're worthy and fuel the fire. Okay. And so just like things that like, I want to achieve and things that like make me feel good or pump me up are in the front of it. Um, and then obviously like when I first opened it, the first thing is just charts of girls that I'm working with. Okay. Now how I keep track of my potential. I have a spiral. It's literally just a spiral. Okay. And this is this month. I just made it, but I'll show y'all last month. What I do is on every, and I keep these. So like I, I literally have like spirals and pieces of paper, all the way back to the November that I joined in of 2016. Okay. So whenever we drop like a half off deal or a new product, I can literally follow up with every single person I've ever talked to in this business because I have written it down, write everything down. Okay. I am 
pen and paper kind of person because I cannot lose this. I had an iPad for like a month and I just could not do it. Like I could not keep up with, um, yeah, I could not keep up with it not being like pen and paper. Like I'm just a pen and paper kind of person. Like the iPad stressed me out. Um, so I draw a line down the middle and one side is potential loyal customers. The other side is potential distributors. Every single person that I talked to about this business, I, I don't care if they swapped up and they said, what is this business that you're doing? And I say, Hey, are you familiar with network marketing? And they don't message me back. They're a potential distributor. Okay. Eventually they're going to see something that I posted. I'm going to follow up with them at some point and it's going to be the time that they need. They go on my list. Okay. So literally everybody's names are written down. Same for customers. Okay. Like literally the names are written down for customers. I write what product they're interested in. I'll like abbreviate it. So like, you know, keto coffee, chocolate greens, triple threat, like whatever it is, I write down the product that they're interested in. And, um, no, I literally, no, I don't cross them off. The only way I cross them off is if they blocked me and I can't find them, then I'm like, okay, bye. But literally if they've unfollowed me, I'll still message you. Um, I'm relentless with my follow-ups literally. And that's what you need to do. Um, and like what platform I'm talking to them. So Facebook, Instagram, every now and then I'll get somebody who will message me on Snapchat, which is really weird, but I've signed two customers from Snapchat. Um, and then for distributors, their name, and then obviously where I'm talking to them from. And so on follow-up Fridays, I can sit down and then as they've enrolled, I highlight it so I can see who's enrolled. So on follow-up Fridays, I pull out this spiral and I'll go down the potential side. I'll go to their name. I can see what product they're interested in. And so I'll just edit my follow-up to fit that product. And then, you know, I'll do all the Instagram ones and then all the Facebooks. And then for potential distributors, it's the same thing. And even now, um, I um, actually just figured this out, but, and y'all probably already know this, but I'm just, Connect confuses me. I love Connect, but it's just when I, every time I sit down to try to play with it, I get frustrated. So I just know, like I do on Connect what I know how to do. And so the other day um, on Wednesday, I sat down because it codes were almost expired. And um, like I had used all mine, but I was like trying to help my team. And so I was like, okay, like we're just going to like make a code pool and like just knock these codes out. Um, and so I followed up with every single potential distributor that I have in my phone. And what I did is I went to Connect. And if y'all are ha like having these conversations with people, I um, mean, you get their phone number, like put like, you know, whatever, like Carly Guerrero and then next to it put PLC or PDT. And then what you can do in connect, you can update the phone list or your contacts list in connect. And you could literally just um, type in PDT and it's going to search that and it's going to pull up every single phone, like in your phone, every single PDT, all of them. And then you can sit there and connect and add them all and do your follow-up message and sit there and send, like I sent 200 something potential distributor follow-ups in like 10 minutes. You have to turn off your iMessage because if you send so many iMessages, you can get blocked from iMessaging and that's a disaster. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's so easy. And so um, organizing like my contacts in that way, writing everybody's names down. Um, and that's honestly like all I do to keep my follow-ups clean is I write their names down potential customer, what products and where I'm talking to them, same for distributors. That's perfect. Um, my question, I guess, with the binder is like, do you ever find, because I'm so like, I don't know, just was thinking about it. Like, do you ever find that you forget your binder or that like you're on the road or you're traveling or whatever, and it's like hard for you to grab a paper copy or do you just like screenshot it and write it down later? Or how do you hold yourself accountable for that? So if I'm, no, if you're not coloring with this stuff. No, you can go out there and get your colors. Um, if I am like, okay, so anytime I go on like vacation, I take all of this with me. I literally just take my binder with me. Um, as far as like, just like being out, um, like if I'm just not at home, um, I won't check my messages until I get home, until I can sit down. Okay. And so like, as I'm, because like, it's kind of like if I've sent a bunch of, because most of the time that when I'm messaging, it's like throughout the day. And then I get to check those like, like nap time. Right. And then I can be writing those down cause I'm sitting here and then you go ask Gigi for some colors and paper or lay down right here. Um, and then if I'm like out, like, let's say that I've sent a bunch of messages and I've gone out to like pick Berkeley up from school or I'm at the grocery store or I'm like out with friends or something, I won't open those messages and I won't keep those conversations going until I can sit down 
and like write it down. You know what I mean? If I feel like it's like a good conversation and they're going to enroll, then yeah, I'll do it. But if I feel like it's something that's like going to be me, like having to like, you know, keep track of, I'll wait until I'm home and can write it down. Or some, there's been some times where I'll take screenshots, but I think that's kind of just like your preference, you know, because I don't want anybody to ever fall through the cracks. And so I do sometimes get paranoid about it. I love the idea of sitting down and like responding to all of them because I am so good about sending out messages like in the nooks and crannies of my day, but I always like get lost with the follow-up just because I am so bad at organization. So that helps me a ton. Thank you. So one of my last questions and then we can kind of do like Q and A or if you have anything else to add. Um, but what was the jump either mindset wise? And I know that you touched on this a little bit from going double to triple. Um, but because I'm going for triple, I personally want to know like, what was it? Was it your team that was more excited? You were more excited. You made the decision. Was it more work that you were doing? Like, what was that jump between that rank? Um, so whenever, like, I remember whenever I was a double and I was trying to chart for triple, um, it almost, it's this paper or nothing. Um, it was almost like something kept, hold on just a second. It was almost like something kept like distracting me or like keeping me, um, from like fully getting charted. And so honestly, I f almost feel, I don't know. I just, I feel like it was, well, actually it was a mindset thing because I remember um, we had just gotten that house, um, like when I was still married, and we had just gotten that house, and I remember like I had my desk, and I had my triple chart on the wall, and I was like 30-something away from being charted, but there was just always something, it's like I would be like in a good flow, and then um, like we would get in an argument or a fight or something, and it would just like distract me, and it's like, well, there goes my mindset, and it's like I wasn't able to like keep my business going because I just honestly, like... I kept my business going, but like my mindset wasn't where it needed to be for me to be working towards such a huge promotion. And honestly, it was just like, I left that marriage and it was like all of that weight was off of my shoulders and I was able to just like breathe and like keep my mind where it needed to be. And so, you know, which, and that's kind of like, if you have anything in your life and this is for anybody, like if you have anything in your life, that's just like toxic, whether it be, you know, a friend or someone on your team or a family member or something that's just like always like bringing you back down. Like sometimes like you have to cut those ties in order for you to level up because that is what it is. Like you're leveling up. And Shay said something at that event that we went to in Dallas. Um, and she said that, you know, the tide is constantly like going up and stuff. And there's going to be ships that rise with the tide and there's going to be some ships that stay on the shore. And like, if your best friend is one of those ships that is staying on the shore, don't stay on the shore just to be with them. Like, you know, like if you're wanting to rise with the tide then rise with the tide, you know? And so I think that it was honestly me just like getting my mindset where it needed to be. And like really just noticing that like, I'm taking this business where it's going. Like nobody's going to do it for me. Um, and it was, you know, rally, I rallied the troops. I went to the people who were promoting. I went to my leaders and I was like, listen, I didn't ask, are you ready to do this? I said, you're going double, you're going diamond. And I broke it up. And so what's triple, a double and two diamonds? Yeah, so I promoted my two diamonds. Um, I think it was, did Brianna promote in August and Allison in September? And then I promoted in October, Allison saying, yeah. So that's what I did. I, um, you can't have these, they're too hard. Um, I promoted it or I split it up like that and I did one leg at a time. Um, and I just, I did all the things, you know, I was, it's funny because I look back at my, um, Facebook memories and I had this like flow to my post. It would be like a good morning keto coffee post. And then the next one was just like some kind of filler post. The third one was a before and after I posted a before and after every single day, every single day. And I remember cause I, like I, and I remembered this, um, cause kind of like a, a couple, um, weeks ago, I was just like, Oh my gosh, like I haven't enrolled any customers. Like what's going on? Like, what am I not doing? Like, 
you know, because we sometimes we get in those like freak out moments, like, wait, have I lost my mojo? Like, what do I need to do? And so I looked at my um, memories on Facebook and I was like, we well, were just like literally posting a bunch of before and afters. And so I started doing that again. And I was like, I remember because there was one night because like Riley was all, obviously a baby. And so I remember I was making lactation cookies and I was standing in the kitchen. And I was like making this before and after. And as soon as I posted it, I had like two people message me and they, they signed up. And so it was a little bit of everything. It was my mindset. It was me doing more of the work. Like I was still messaging. Um, I was posting more before and afters. Um, we were on work zooms all the time. Like we would wake up and I would just be like, I'd go to like the girls who were promoting and I'd say, I'm turning on a zoom. We're getting on. We're just going to like sign little customers like crazy. Um, and literally like thinking back, like that's how I went double. Like we were on a work zoom until like two or three o'clock in the morning, some nights, you know, just sitting there and messaging and following up and planting seeds. And honestly, like, that's just, that's what every promotion is. You guys, it's like, first off, like believing in yourself, because if you're doing all of the work and you're doing all the things, but if you're not believing that you're actually going to get there, or if you're not believing that the work that you're doing is going to get you there, because sometimes that's the disconnect that you're missing. Like, that's so easy. And like, honestly, like these last like couple of weeks, I've just been so just, like, my eyes have opened to how simple this business really is. It's so simple. We just overcomplicate it and we make it way more difficult than it ever has to be. You're posting on social media. Okay. You're believing in the products that you're using. If you're believing in those products that you're using and you're getting those before and afters, people can sense that on your social media and they're going to start believing it and they're going to want to start using these products. Okay. If you're believing in this business and it, even if you haven't promoted yet and you're like, well, I can't talk about what this business has done for me. What do you believe that it's going to do for you, right? Do you believe that it's going to allow you to pay off that car? Do you believe that it's going to allow you to completely change your life or to come home with your kid? And if you don't believe that that's actually going to happen for you, then you need to work on that because it's not going to happen until you believe, you know? And so like, I just started believing that I was a triple diamond and I was like, like 3000 something group volume away and we pulled that in. And so it's just doing all the things. So good. This has been so fire. I'm so excited about this. And I wanted to add to, I heard, I, I think it was on a Zoom or in some self-development that I was listening to, but I heard that, and regardless of any of your religious beliefs, like if you believe in God, if you believe in the universe, I'm going to say the universe and take that into whatever context you want. But the universe's only job is to say yes to you. So if you are sitting there all day long saying, I'm doing all the work and this is just so hard and I'm never going to get there. The universe says, yes, you're right. But if you sit there and you're like, no, this is what we're doing. We're getting on a working zoom. We're going to get our minds right. We're going to sign loyal customers. Today. If you, that's your forefront of your mind, then the universe is also going to say yes. And you're going to reap those rewards. So I just wanted to add that on because I loved what you just said. Um, but I don't know if anybody has any questions, if you want to drop them in the chat real quick for her to answer. Um, before I turn off the recording and everything, or Carly, if you have anything else to add, I really appreciate you doing this with us. I love doing Zooms. Like I literally, I think that there's, there's almost like a personal development for me because it just like makes me feel good and like puts me like in a good mood and like gets me going. Um, I do want to say like personal development, you guys. Okay. Literally do personal development and um, the way that I always tell my team to do it is don't do business personal development. Okay. Because watching a zoom or doing something like that, like that's something that you should do like later, you know, like, yes, still do that. But try starting your day with like heart and mind, personal development, getting yourself ready for the day, like to conquer whatever, because like I said, life is always going to be trying to throw something your way. Okay. And if you're about to level up, your life is going to get really freaking hard. Okay. Like if you've got something good coming your way, you've got a thousand other things going against you. And so like, you have to just like be prepared and like have your heart and mind where they need to be so that you can face those challenges and keep going in your business. Because it's so easy if your mindset's not where it needs to be to let the distractions and everything just like get you off course. And sometimes it's super hard to get back on course. Um, Katie asked, you have a certain amount of messages. Yes. So a hundred messages a day, like, or more, there's a lot of times where I send way more, but I will always send at least 100. Um, and I had, I had one girl 
um, she wasn't on my team. I don't know who she is, but she reached out to me in the business and she was like, I'm just not getting where I want to be in this business. I was like, okay, like, are you posting every day? And she was like, no. I was like, okay. Are you sending messages every day? And she was like, well, yeah. And I was like, well, how many messages do you send? She was like, anywhere from like five to 30. And I was like, okay, let's just like up it. And this I'm going to, so books or podcasts that I'm listening to right now. Um, the 10 X rule by Grant Cardone, get it, listen to it. It's, um, I got it as a, um, pod or a, um, audio book. You can log into audible with your Amazon account and it gives you two free credits and that's one book. And so I got that book for free. Um, if you think that you're on fire and you're killing it right now, he's literally going to like reality check you and you're going to be like, okay, I have been slacking. Like I need to get together. Cause like literally I was looking at like my business and like what I was doing is like, you know, you're doing good. Like you're being consistent. You're, you're doing your six list. You're sending your messages. You're doing all these things. And then I started like listening to him and I was like, okay, I need to do more. I need to 10 exit. Okay. And so that is a really good one. Um, so another one is, um, it's not up here, but the uh, secrets of the millionaire minds. Yeah. Secrets of the millionaire mind. That's another really good one. I love that book. Um, and then for people who are like leaders or stepping into leadership, this is a really good one. It's called freakishly effective leadership for network marketers. Um, I really like this book a lot because you know, people, um, there's some people who will come into your business, um, as a season. Okay. Because not everybody is going to go to the top of this company. And, and something that was hard for me to understand is not every person who joins this business wants to go to the top. Some people just want to join for $500, you know, their, their other job or whatever they love and they just want an extra $500 and they're going to be like the 80% of your business. Okay. And it talks about this in the book and then you have, and they're your people who like, they go Ruby and they're fine. Like I, I'm, I'm just fine at being Ruby. Okay. Don't try to push those people to go diamond or to the top with you until they're ready. Okay. Because it could change and they could be ready. But and then it talks about like your 15%, which are your people who, um, they like join kind of like emeralds, maybe like diamonds, you know, and they, they are going to promote and they're going to be there kind of like as a little bit of a foundation, but they don't really want to push and go to the top. Okay. And then you have your 5% who they're like, I don't care what it takes. I'm going to do it. And I think, you know, kind of just like recognizing, um, where people might want to be and just like loving on them in that season and knowing that like at any time, you know, your 80 percenters could change into a five percenter. It's just like, you know, I don't know, kind of just like feeling each person for how, where they are and how they're working their business. So never trying to like push somebody in a direction that they're not ready for or don't want to go yet. That's very eye opening because I'm so like, I'm very red. So for me, it's balls to the wall and pardon my French, but like, seriously, I am like all in whatever. And so that's kind of not my expectation, but something that I feed off. And that's such a huge realization for me too. And people who are red like me that are too aggressive in a way that's like pushing them for things they're not ready for. So that's huge. I love that. Yeah. No I'm super red. And like, I had to Please. think, oh, I asked Gigi to turn it on for you. I cannot turn it on right now. Um, I'm like super red as well. And I actually had to like kind of start like almost like praying and like working on myself to be like, can you like help me be more yellow and more, you know, because I'm like, what's your goal? Okay. Here's how you're going to reach it. Okay. Why haven't you met your goal? Like, are you not doing the things? And so I kind of had to like tone it down because not everybody is like you, not everybody is red. And that's too, like one way that um, we train our distributors now is, we make them do the, not make them, but we suggest that they do the color personality quiz and we'll train them based off that. So if somebody's red, I'm like, let's go. If somebody's yellow, you know, like you, tr if you train based off that, because not everybody's the same in this business and not everybody's going to be trained the same. And so I'm just like, I don't know. I like that we've changed it to that and started doing that because you are about to get in trouble, Berkeley Grace. Um, not everybody is the same, but yeah, I'm super red and I had to work on not being so red with everybody. No, I'm the same way. I love that feedback. So that was huge for me. Thank you. Do you guys have any other questions before I turn 
the recording off and let y'all go. I want to give you a sec. Okay, what was the name of that book again? Freakishly? Freakishly Effective Leadership for Network Marketers. Freakishly Effective Leadership for Network Marketers. Okay, perfect. I wrote it down right. Yay, well, thank you so, so much for doing this with us and for just showing up. I really appreciate it. Even though we're not on the same team, you're like amazing and I'm so thankful for you. And I know that my team was very excited for this. So I appreciate it. You're welcome.